talk about it as expression. Mm -hmm. Uh, You express some of your creativity through food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think food is, uh, so it's it's about community. Yeah, I think that um, part of it was as a female and male dominated sport. Well, Silicon Laman, of course, you know that name and recognize her. She made waves as a champion rower and famously overcoming a major rowing accident 10 weeks before the 1992 Summer Games in Barcelona. Uh, Overcoming that and other obstacles has put mental health and hers personally to the ultimate test. And she's sharing some of those struggles in her new podcast called Inflection Time and has a few special guests that you're looking at right now. Silicon Laman, welcome to CP20 for breakfast again. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. Thank you for talking about the podcast. Absolutely. So let's talk about this inflection time the name is interesting how did you come up with this and what's the sort of concept behind it you know I think as a speaker and a writer I've always been interested in kind of people's life story their personal development and I think I've been telling my life story for 30 years and have Mm -hmm. had that kind of desire to tell other people's stories so in my charity which is focused unsinkable which is focused on mental health it's a story sharing site Mm -hmm. this is a different kind of thing because we're taking well-known people like Chef Friday or Haley Wickenheiser and we're just talking about those moments in our life that were really hard when we struggled. Those moments in our life where like an opportunity came that we never expected and it took our life in a totally different Mm -hmm. direction. So and then how you know sometimes when I think about my accident for instance and you know such a hard time a permanent injury but it actually took my life in a very positive direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting the way you look at it, right? How your perspective is and if you can adjust it sort of. Yeah, and I also thought like there's so much bad news out there. Mm -hmm. And by interviewing people about their lives and, you know, people that, you know, the average person looks up to and getting real about the struggles and the times that they wanted to give up. And I just thought it would be also really uplifting and maybe encourage people along their journeys. So for you personally, uh, as an interviewer, being on sort of the, my side mm-hmm. of the microphone, as it were, mm-hmm. rather than that one right mm-hmm. now, how did you find that? And how did you find that whole idea of opening up these conversations? Because they're not necessarily easy to have. Yeah. I realize your guests knew what they were in for. But what was that like for you? Yeah, well, you're going to have to tell me if you like it or not, because <laughs> we, we, we've only dropped one episode with okay. Erica M. today. Yeah. Um, Weirdly, it was very natural. And I think it's because I set it up as a conversation, Mm -hmm. not an interview. I think it would have been a lot more stressful had I thought about it as an interview. But, you know, I have things to add about almost everything. You know, I've had a daughter with a stepdaughter with autism. I've had four kids. I've been through a divorce. I've changed countries. Like there's so many things that have happened in my life. So almost like as you're interviewing somebody, as you're having that conversation, and the nice thing about podcasts, unlike, you know, television, mm-hmm. is you have more time. Yeah. So exactly. you can go deep. And I think, honestly, I've been through so much in my life. I know how to be open hearted yeah. and vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And I think I successfully create that space in the podcast for my guests to feel that way, too, that they're safe in sharing their stories. What's been the most surprising moment to you so far? So far, uh, Haley Wickenheiser talking about being six years old, little girl, yeah, kind of in the in the boiler room of a hockey rink, you know, because there's no girls to change change, room, uh, playing on a boys' team, and a mother coming in and telling her she had no right to be here and to get lost. Yeah, and I was thinking, actually, that's amazing. Imagine telling that to a six-year-old. Yeah, a little girl. Yeah, and you know, Haley's so tough, and you think, well, that's why Mm -hmm. she, in order to follow her dream. She had to prove so many people wrong. Yeah. And, and it's interesting to talk to people who have had that much pressure on them. Yeah. And then, you know, where do you then find your softness? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. do you then find your vulnerability? And that's what's interesting about these public people like Erica M. She's, she's in her 20s when she's, when she's hosting right much music, yeah. right? She's yeah. hosting much music. It's like it, it, it's taken off. Mm-hmm. She's in her, nobody's training her. Uh, yeah. She's like figuring it out as she goes, right? Yeah. And it's only later, like now, that she's, you know, close to my age, right? Mm-hmm. It, and it, she's yeah. looking back and going, wow, mm-hmm. I did that when I was 20. Yeah. But also kind of like... I think back to my rowing and I had so many obstacles in my rowing that now when I face obstacles in my other parts of my life where I'm really nervous or something, I think nothing can be worse than an Olympic starting line. Yeah, that's a good point. Listen, this is a great place to start and finish. Silk and Laman, good luck with the uh, podcast inflection time. Great to meet you this morning as well. Thanks so much. Yeah, lovely to meet you. 
Tomorrow is International Cake Decorating Day, so of course we had to bring in friend of the show and baker extraordinaire, <laughs> Susie uh, Gazzaloni uh, from Susie's Cake Angels to show us some of her favorite recipes uh, just in time for Thanksgiving. Now, Susie, uh, what do you have for us today? And we were talking about how nostalgic the flavors, the smells of the Yes, season can this be. is that time of the year, fall. You know, Thanksgiving is just around the corner, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I get the pressures of, with the Thanksgiving baking, you know how. Oh, everyone's there's a, like, asking everybody's you to like, host, right? Yeah, can you make me a pie? Can you make <laughs> me a cake? Oh, my goodness. So I like to keep things very simple okay. and, um, you know, convenient. So I have some pumpkin puree, canned pumpkin Beautiful. puree here that we're going to go through. But first, I wanted to work through our pumpkin spice yes. coffee cake. Now, you're telling me that both the texture and the flavor are fantastic. So what texture, makes this work flavor, so well? It's the, the cake itself and then the crumble on, on top. So we're going to work through the cake first. And now I have the flour here and okay. the sugar. Do you recommend setting out all the ingredients like this yeah. just to make it easy for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. I like to do my two bowl methods. So we have oh. the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients. Okay, I like So that. I'm going to actually do the sifting here. Okay, sift away. And you're going to get the spices. Ooh, okay. So Sorry, reach I across. have my, my warming spices here. So the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the mm. ginger, the cloves, Spicy. that all adds to the flavor and the aroma of the cake that fall feeling yeah, and it just complements the pumpkin really well so i'm gonna get you what to dump that it? right in there bill in, right in, in here oh in here okay right into I'm the good, dry I'm right that, that, that i can do right and, and so just, why are you sifting it through just to make it smaller, so smaller? what this does it aerates the flour oh and it creates that fluffy texture in the cake okay. itself so you get that nice cakey feeling. Things you teach me, Susie. I know, right? Okay. We've got to bake together. We gotta yeah, like so a, I'm all about a that. Baking I session. feel like we're, this is the beginning of a journey. I, I love this. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. What's this? So we have the pumpkin puree. Actually, so I'm going to show you how it's done. This is cheesecloth, right? This is a cheesecloth. I have the puree in here. Okay. What happens with pumpkin, it's got a lot of moisture and liquid. And in order to avoid the cake getting soggy and dense, we have to squeeze all that moisture out. Oh, that's the, so oh, you wow. see oh, that, that's all the point that. of it. Okay, so and that's what you're why left with is kind of a drier mush. Yes, okay. right. So I'm just squeezing that Where out. Where do you get cheesecloth, by the way? Um, I you can buy it at a grocery place. store. Yeah? Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can in the, the you know how they have those little sections yep. in the aisles? You yep. can just grab okay. that. And we're gonna dump it into <sighs> this. Into I already have oil and eggs in here. And then I'm actually gonna get you okay. to <laughs> I'm using the wrong utensil. It's I, okay. I need your help. This here. is part of the baking do I, process. Do I, whoops, do I whisk? Yeah, just whisk that. I thought yeah, that was getting we're, all over us, but we're good. It's okay. okay, we're good. We're good. I do the laundry at home, so don't worry about <laughs> okay. it. You can get it <laughs> anywhere. And do so I now I have that? sour cream here. Mm -hmm. Do I just keep whisking? You keep whisking. Whisk I'll dump away. In this. Okay. Sour mm -hmm. cream is great because I have some baking soda in here and it's activated. Acti so because it's an acidic ingredient, okay. the baking soda activates the properties in the sour cream, which adds flavor. Yum. And it contributes to the texture, creating oh. that kind of that soft. Oh, that again, soft moist. Moist. Yes. yes. We want to add moistness Lisa into that. Lisa hates when I use that word in weather, but <laughs> that's okay. Well, we we're baking right baking. now. We're allowed <laughs> it makes to exactly. Sense. So okay. this is do I keep great. Going? Perfect. You, wow, you're really good at this. Well, I used to oh do this God. with my mom. We were talking about this. Yes, There's a nostalgic that's right. feel about baking that that I really do. That's Struggle how I started off too. I, we were I saying talk. like we both baked with our moms. Yeah. And then we said beautiful. we could have our own baking show. And now we're going to do our own baking <laughs> okay. show, just letting you know, I Bill and that. I. Yep. Let's bake with Bill and Sue. Remembering mom. Yeah. And so now I just mix the wet into the dry, and then, you know, you It's just like fold. You fold just the fold. Cheese, Gently yeah, um, fold. Get all that pumpkin flavor in. Actually, you want to do some yeah, folding I do. here? I know. I, I can see Is that this, you're am so I literally, excited to... Am I literally folding? Is Absolutely, that what, yeah. Now, why do you do this instead of like... Again, you're adding more air into the air. batter. Oh, the air and is And again, so it important. adds that fluffy texture, okay. right? That consistent texture throughout. Beautiful. Am I folding So good? once that's all folded nicely, we can move over to the crumble, which is okay. the fun part. Okay. So if that's the nice texture yeah, of the so, top, yeah, little, right? Yeah, yeah. That crispy compliment. and the, the contrast. You get yeah, the, the contrast. So when you bite in, you get that little crunch <laughs> and then that softness. Okay. So I already have sugar in here, flour, and I have brown sugar because brown sugar caramelizes, adds like that caramel okay. taste to that. it. We have about a minute, which is lots okay. of time. But and we have do do our here? spices here that okay. I'm just going to throw in here. Same Again, that warming that spices using. to add to that flavor of the pumpkin. Beautiful. Now, with you, the butter here. grated butter. I've never we seen We grate it. butter. Frozen butter, the trick is... 
always use frozen butter and you just grate it through. I'm going to actually get you to grate yeah, that sure. through. Isn't I, it I, fun? It looks like hands. cheese, but it's not cheese. Uh, yeah, it's I've, I've never even thought to do this. But, and what the point of this is to just make it melty more evenly? Yes, and because you're adding to that, cr you want to make that crumble, this actually contributes to that and makes it a lot easier. Okay, I don't want to So I'm going to just dump in it in there, here. So. Yeah, don't, don't, we can't have you bleeding here. That's not a good, that's not a good look for us okay, here. I think our director said <laughs> something on the table, but I'm not sure. Okay. okay, and then so we just, just mix just, that. As we're doing this, just let us know what else. So you've got we out. have our pumpkin spice coffee cake, and which is what we did. I can actually grab yeah, one of you these can try one of those. We have the bun cake. So in light of tomorrow's international cake, cake decorating, decorating day. day, you don't necessarily have to go all out. You can use a glazed or icing sugar I love that. to do that. And then we have the pumpkin loaf and our mini pumpkin bun cakes as well. Okay, Susie Gazzaloni, uh, or it should be Susie and Bill. Susie and Bill's <laughs> baking show. Baking show in the Stay future. Stay tuned for more. <laughs> Thanks. And how, how can we find out these recipes? You, you can find to... me on Instagram at Susie's Cake Angels or on my website at Susie's Cake Angels .com. Mm. I have your beautiful book. Here, and so. that's my book, Secrets from a Baker. And you can find, I actually have nine recipes, pumpkin recipes in there. This if you're interested really in more pumpkin stuff. Thank you so much. <laughs> Along with I other do. recipes. I want to bake with you in the future. Oh no, let's do this. Let's do it this. Is <laughs> Mountains are taller than ever before. I know it's not an island for one. Well, Irish trio Amble have quickly made fans all over the world with their folk style, showcasing their love of their country and, of course, Irish culture. And they're up bright and early this morning after a sold-out show last night at Baby G. Uh, Robbie, O'Sheen, and Ross, thank you all for being here this morning. Great to talk to you. Uh, here, I, I'm, I'm really surprised that a bunch of rockers or band guys are up right after a show, but uh, you all look really fresh-faced and ready to go, so, so thanks for the time. How was the show last night, first of all? It was brilliant, yeah. It was, uh, it was just amazing, as I was saying just a minute ago, but we did similar size shows in Ireland six months ago, mm -hmm. so now to be translating to American and Canadian audiences and similar rooms over here, it's just... Mm -hmm. It's surreal. So yeah, yeah, it was a really, really good show last night. Yeah, yeah. and, and Oshin, this has really all happened so quickly for you guys. You've only known each other for a couple of years. Essentially, yeah, we met about two years ago and it was we met through music and kind of with the goal of becoming a band almost straight away. So uh, I, it's, it's actually incredible to be here, to be honest. Yeah. So Ross, how did that all come about? Because, you, you know, Oshin said you met through music. What does that mean? You were in the same place playing music? Or what's not, the not sort of even, uh, story? Robbie reached out to, to Oshin first on Instagram because he wanted to sing play music with someone mm -hmm. um, and then Oshin kind of done the same to me just through Instagram half knew me going this man plays music and that's kind of how we, we formed it was just we said we had a little gig then in, in Robbie's hometown in, in, in Leitrim in Ireland and we played a gig and we were like Let's make a band. Yeah. I, I assume that you've probably all been in some sort of bands or one another, you know, before or no? Like this, no. Like, did you know this was no. special compared to any previous well, Robbie? Or? I had never sang really before, or never sang in front of crowds. I was doing it uh, maybe late, late nights at house parties or on my own, but never, uh, never something I want or a career out of. I was a primary school teacher in Ireland. So, no kidding. Uh, no, I'd never done it, but I was mad to play in maybe a pub and do a bit of busking and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I never would have done it on my own. So I reached, that's why I reached out to Oshin and he did the same to Ross and then uh, but I was I was working as a data scientist Come only, on. only five or six months ago. So <laughs> data I was, scientist. I was yeah. a complete nerd. Ross and still there. Right now you're, yeah this is incredible. Uh, yeah. And and social media you know plays on multiple levels for you guys because first of all obviously you met and sort of saw each other, learned mm. about each other through it. But also because of social media and its global impact, you've got about 150 you know followers on TikTok right now, good Spotify coverage. How much do you attribute social media to the sort of success of Amble right now? I suppose we, we released music and it was kind of gradually building, but we were being told by our kind of small fan base at the time, you need to get on TikTok. It's just music spreads there. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a TikTok beforehand and then honestly we made it and it just started to, to go. Yeah. And it's, uh, to, be, to be sitting in Toronto like and us from you know the west of Ireland, it, social media has a huge part yeah. Yeah, to play in that, you know. Especially over here as well, we've talked to a lot of the audiences and some people found us through TikTok or found mm -hmm. it, you know, especially Canadians and Americans and they drove hours to come and see us then, so it's amazing the power it has. Like, there yeah. there's so much negativity about social media, but I wouldn't know these two guys only yeah, for right. it. So and it's and a, there are plenty of pitfalls and negativity course, course, to it, yeah. but this is amazing. Ross, I need to ask what you were doing before the band because oh, now I know a data scientist yeah. Primary school I was, a, teacher. I was a, a gym teacher or a PE teacher yeah. in Ireland uh, in secondary school as well. Yeah, yeah. so it's amazing. I, 
I, I went, we all, we all decided to go full time then at the music and so, give it a go. So now that you are together and, and working as, as a unit, as a trio here, what's the creative process like? Do you all bring different things to the table? How, do you, how would you describe that collaboration? Yeah, it's an interesting one, but I suppose the unique part of Amble is that we all write songs. So we're all three individual songwriters as well. So we all brought a, a, a book of songs basically to the table when we met and we chose some of the best ones. And then since then, we've started writing with each other in mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, that's kind of one of us might write a song or a verse or a chorus. Yeah. Or Ross, Ross is more instrumental, um, so he might bring something to the group. Sorry, no, yeah. he writes great songs. <laughs> <laughs> I take your yeah. point, though. I mean, you know. yeah, but um, no, so we might bring it to the group, and then as a collective trio, then we might change it up or you know add lyrics or whatever. But that's kind of how we do it. And any of you can pick this last answer up. Uh, where does Amble come from? The name. Um, I was thinking of names for a long time, and it means to walk at a kind of slow pace to. Mm -hmm saunter about and I just thought that kind of suited our vibe and uh, it took a few weeks actually to come yeah, up with yeah. that but so I wanted people. something that would be <laughs> yeah. universal and, and I'm called Oshin which is a problem and I didn't want that problem for the band. <laughs> <laughs> I see, <laughs> right, yeah. Amble can yeah. be worldwide and that's kind of hopefully. Yeah, okay know. and before I let you go you just finished a show in Toronto. When are you back in Toronto? When's the next gig? Uh, we're back on the 16th of May. 16th of 16th May. Yeah. May. Yeah. Velvet yeah. Underground I think yeah. is the All right. Yeah. Again, yeah. just yeah. right around the corner. Before we well. let you go we have a little present. We have oh, a pair wow. of Amble socks. The Amble socks? Okay, <laughs> if only I wore socks. <laughs> <laughs> now this yeah. is great. Thank you gents. A nice pint of Guinness on there too. Listen, <laughs> Robbie, so nice Oshin, Ross, good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Nice to meet all of you. Yeah, pleasure. Okay, welcome back. Toronto illustrator and cartoonist Paul Gilligan has created works for some of the world's most popular animated shows and writes daily comic strip Pooch's Cafe. And he's about to release his memoir as a graphic novel, Boy vs. Shark. So joining us live now in the studio is the author and illustrator, Paul Gilligan. Welcome to the show, Paul. So great of you to come oh, in. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so thrilled. I have a copy of the book, Boy vs. Shark, and it is uh, a really special treat, um, mm. an homage to your 1970s childhood. But I love how you incorporated this piece of pop culture into it, and that is the Jaws movie. Yeah, well, um, when uh, <laughs> when I was, uh, you know, in 75, I was, like, doing my best uh, yeah. to get through boyhood, and then this um, movie comes out about a giant shark ripping people to shreds, <laughs> which inexplicably everyone is seeing. Oh. So um, I had no choice but to prove I wasn't a wimp mm -hmm. and go and see it as well. But, you know... Uh, had the opposite effect. Instead of proving my courage, it ended up uh, reducing me to a cowering mass and oh uh, unable to go into uh, bodies of water of any size and, uh, and traumatizing me into wow. uh, imagining the shark was uh, living in my closet and um, telling me, it became like a kind of uh, macho Jiminy Cricket, yeah. um, telling me what I needed to do in order to keep up with my friends and to be a man. Oh my um, goodness. Which, uh, you know, um, spoiler alert, uh, it's not a great idea to listen to what a shark says. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, Paul, that, you just took us on like this whirlwind, like meta uh, explanation. And it makes sense because you really document it in this graphic novel. It, it touches on themes of just boyhood, uh, toxic masculinity. There's a bully in here. So obviously these are real remnants. These are tidbits from kind of what you experienced growing up, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, toxic masculinity wasn't a term at the time, I think, but, yeah. um, but uh, you know, it's something that uh, I think uh, every boy feels to a point, especially as you're uh, on the cusp of, uh, well, the end of boyhood and, and into manhood. You uh, start experiencing things where um, people are saying, like, hey, you should act a certain mm -hmm. way. And... Um, and then it's underlined if you, uh, you know, can't see a movie um, that everyone else is seeing because you find it too scary. At wow. the time, I was like, you know, afraid of um, mm. Grimace from the McDonald's commercials. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> hey, my son is too. Ever since those Grimace shake challenges came out about people drinking it and turning purple, he's terrified of Grimace. So. Yeah, it was a scary figure. So <laughs> I had no business seeing a movie like Jaws. Wow. Okay, and can I ask you, in writing this graphic novel, doing the illustrations, has it kind of been therapeutic for you? Where is your phobia today with water and sharks? Yeah, well, I've gotten a lot better. I can go into pools now. Um, if I'm in the ocean, I kind of try to make sure that there's at least one person farther out to sea mm -hmm. than I am. And uh, God forbid anybody uh, on the beach happens to have a tuba. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, for sure. Uh, have you... Um, 
shared this book with your your ten year old son? Yes, he's uh, he's read it and uh -huh. he's read it twice. Yeah, and what he does he loves think? It. Yeah, he loves it. I mean, I did. Uh, you know, it is for ten to twelve year olds. Mm -hmm. So whenever I uh, referenced uh, scenes from the movies, uh, instead of humans, I replaced them with balloon animals. Yes. So it made it a little more palatable. I didn't want to create any more uh, little traumatized versions of myself. For sure. Yeah, you definitely give homage to. You know, you've got the nineteen seventy five time capsule and the Jeff Koons balloon animal, <laughs> the dog that we see here. At first, I, I was looking through it and I was like, oh, the sharks eating sausages, but no, those are just balloon, <laughs> yeah, they're balloon, balloon animals. animals. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Paul Gilligan, such a pleasure to have you with us. And the book is out now, so people can get it on Amazon, That's true. Indigo, bookshops, everywhere. That's correct. Yeah. You were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't speak. When I couldn't see You saw the best There was in me Lifted me Well, singer Mackenzie wowed the hearts of viewers and judges on The Voice, season 15, for her amazing takes on some very difficult songs to perform. And she's been busy getting her music career off the ground, and she's made the trip to Canada for the very first time in Toronto to take part in the Lyric Block Party happening tomorrow night at the Rebel Entertainment Complex, along with some other great R&B artists. But we'd like to welcome Mackenzie to CP24 Breakfast Hi. and welcome her to Canada for the first time ever. How are you doing, Mackenzie? I'm doing good. How are you? Very well, very well. I am in just awe of your voice. Uh, thank um, you. And I think the judges were too on, you know, The Voice. Bad. Mary J. Blige, Kelly Clarkson. I mean, you've sung for Mariah Carey. Mm -hmm. uh, some pretty amazing legends. I, I want to just check with you post The Voice. You're now living in L.A. Mm -hmm. What has your journey, what has your world been like? Oh, man, um, a whirlwind. A lot has happened since then. It feels like forever ago. Um, Shoot, I've been married, I've been oh. divorced, I've moved oh, wow. across the country, like I've been signed to a major record label, I've been, I've got a music company of my own as well, like it's, so much has happened, so much has happened, so. Life has just been a yeah a whirlwind. Yeah, if, if you, ever there's a time to use that phrase, it's that's amazing. I mean, we, we played a snippet of, of your music there, but your rendition of "How Deep Is Your Love," mm -hmm. uh, "Big White Room," so many things. I mean, it's all over the internet, and I think your fans are very dedicated to you. They they just applaud your range, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about music and you growing up in Kentucky, singing in a church since you were three years old, mm -hmm. and just your dad being a big influence, but also your mom playing like. Like Christina Aguilera, all these artists, but you also give a big credit to the black community and singing mm -hmm. in a black gospel church mm -hmm. for where your music is today. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, I, look, I firmly, firmly, firmly believe that I would not be sitting in front of you today without black music and black music culture and everything. Um, Specifically, you know, gospel and and, and blues and R and B and just all of it. You know, all music in general. You know, I think it's important to know where things come from. So do your research, everybody. Do your research. Get educated um, so you can pay proper respects to the places that we draw our inspiration from, you know. So, yeah. Um, uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit of a rambler. No, no. Just I'm a, a rambler, bit, too. So but, uh, two pairs. Yeah. High five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. But, yeah. Um, what was your question? Again? My question was, yeah, just the, exp I think you answered it oh, by okay, saying bet. that you All do right, cool. you do give tribute to them and it yeah. was very instrumental in your career. Very and you've been making so. your own music. I've listened to some of your singles on your album, a pretty effing cool EP. I can't <laughs> say the F word on yeah, TV, no, obviously. Okay. But uh, yeah, nicely titled and in and, and your music, it's got so much diversity. Your song, Lips, some people are mm -hmm. saying it's got that 90s R&B soulful vibe. Again, mm -hmm. a bit of Prince in there mm -hmm. and also Velvet and your collaboration with T.A. Thomas on Maybe. Uh, how's, how's it been like creating your own music and, and just finding your own style, given that you have all these different styles of music in your head? How do you hone your own? Yeah, um, it really, it's going to vary every session for real because I don't really... I don't know, I don't think I have like a style per se. I like to say that my voice is my genre because like I love to just mm -hmm. sing what I like to sing, whether it's R&B or disco or country or metal, like whatever it is, I just I just love music. So um, I would say creating music and stuff throughout these past few years, because I've not been writing very long, mm -hmm. has been a blast. It's been a challenge. 
Um, I've learned a lot and I've been given all the more reason to just keep studying the way that I've studied my whole life. Um, yeah, I don't know, just music, man. I don't know, I just Yeah, you love it and you're in your music. element and yeah. it's so well deserved and I'm so glad that the world got a chance to listen to you sing on The Voice because it brought you to where we are today yeah. and you can all listen to Mackenzie and so many other artists at the Lyric Block Party happening tomorrow at the Rebel Entertainment Complex yes. in Toronto. Uh, welcome to the city and Thank good you. luck with everything and I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more from you coming up. Thanks so much, Mackenzie. Thank you. Take care. All right, that does it for our show on CP24 Breakfast. Thank you to our viewers for watching. I hope everyone has an amazing Thanksgiving long weekend. Drive safe. Eat those turkeys. Don't burn them. Don't burn the yams like I did. And yeah, we'll see you again on Tuesday. Back with news with Jamie Goodfriend. Stay with us. It's a learn,